First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, what's new in ATP 3.0. Um, ATP 3.0 was released today by Symantec with some very, very exciting new features that I want to go ahead and discuss with you guys today. Um, so let's go forward from here. So first of all, a little bit about ITS, right? So if you don't know who ITS is, ITS Partners, we're headquartered in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, we are a Semantic National Platinum Partner. Um, all SYMC are all Semantic Technical Distinctions, and we work with the top 15% or in the top 15% of the Fortune 500 companies. We cover systems, service, asset, and risk management. So our agenda today is pretty simple agenda. Um, we're just gonna talk about what's new in ATP 3.0, which is advanced threat protection, and then how ITS can help you uh, going forward. So I love this statement, the statement of I've, I've had it around for a while since the cyber strike days of the original um, early releases of ATP, and it still is relevant today as it was relevant when it first came out. Never before in the history of humankind have people across the world been subject to extortion on a massive scale as they are today. And we all know this, we all see this, we hear about it day to day of the breaches and the ransomware, the different things that are happening out here in, in, the, in our community, on in our internet community. And we're seeing this stuff happen. So that still holds, um, holds a lot of weight today. So when we talk about semantic, uh, like I said, they released the product today, the 3.0 for today, today. So sophisticated attackers are using the living off the land tactics. So what I mean by living off the land tactics is those are certain, the four main categories uh, which fall under that umbrella, okay? So dual use tools such as PXEC, uh, which are used by the attacker, memory only threats such as used as like a code red worm, if you guys remember the code red worm, uh, fileless persistence such as VBS in the registry, and non-PE file attacks such as Office documents with macros and scripts. So the one key indicator of this trend is the surge of a PowerShell attack. So if you think about it, we're starting to see a lot more PowerShell attacks out there. So with the shortage of the trained uh, cybersecurity professionals that we have out there, personnel out there, organizations need to leverage their existing staff to quickly detect and resolve threats. Um, so this is what ATP is for, and this is how ATP will help you going forward. Organizations cannot afford to waste time in deploying additional agents for incident response while fighting um, incursions. So some of the, the, the five of the new main categories of, of ATP that have came out is the new EDR, which is the EDR live, resp live response, and we'll talk about that. On-demand EDR, uh, fileless detections, improved investigations, and the API extensions. So we call it flight, flight data recorder and endpoint data recorder with a single agent. So this is what we talk about a sweep, hunt, collect, and fix type of a process. So you'll see that the SEP, that going from the SEP, it's going out here, the endpoints, we got traffic going back and forth and we can go ahead and we can sweep, hunt, collect that information, correlate that information and resolve or fix that endpoint that is having that issue. A real-time response is the data collected at the endpoint runs through intelligent filters, and then we, we create an incident and then, of course, correlate that incident if compared to any other additional instances that are common that happen. So let's talk about agentless EDR, which is, seems to what everybody's kind of really pumped up about, and I am uh, personally myself too, is the ones, the EDR agentless and the, e and the ATP endpoint. So on the EDR agent list, no persistent agent or SEP required. So you no longer have to have SEP if you go to the EDR agent list. It's visibility into potential suspicious and abnormal activity, anomalous activity, sorry, across endpoints where you don't have SEP. You can also prioritize, analyze endpoint events for suspicious activity to identify critical events, activities, and top instances to investigate. And then you can still also do the same thing, a point of doing the scan for a point in time snapshot of all activity on a node and you um, integrate endpoints for IOC to easily understand what those relationships are. As we've had before also on the endpoint, on the ATP endpoint, which does require um, SEP, um, visibility into potential suspicious abnormal uh, activities across the endpoints, which SEP will block, aggregated and correlated events across the endpoint, also taking those if you have email security and bringing email security into that and network security and balancing those out and correlating that information and bringing it all together. 
So agent, an agentless use case. So collect, remediate, detect, investigate, right? Those are the analytics. Those are what we're going to do around each one of these incidents that occur. Uh, the threat assessment, the incident response, and the continuum monitoring. So EDR agentless features, abnormality detection, machine learning, multi-vendor threat engine, simple installation and maintenance, automated artifact uh, collection. So let's go through this a little bit. So frictionless, right? Resistant to endpoint, uh, endpoint agents requires too much labor and expertise, right? And then the advantages of it is best detection, no agent to manage, no, no change control, super fast deployment, automated requires less labor to go ahead and get it in, uh, deployed and up and running. So the two different categories that we have under this is the endpoint collection um, um, and also the analytics. So the endpoint collection, you can see up on the slide that the running programs, the configured programs, the injected modules, uh, so heuristic user behavior that we have in there, uh, metadata, timeline, and data, and uh, timeline data and artifacts. The analytics is what is adding that extra feature that we're starting to see and starting to use more of is the whitelist and blacklist, the 16 antivirus engines that we use and can pull information from, the binary machine learning, which is um, also an incredible feature, uh, the behavioral traits, um, the user behavioral analysis that's part of our machine learning that we have out there. Uh, program installation methods, uh, timeline analysis, uh, statistical analysis, threat intelligence, and, and then of course the severity score. All this together, all those words, all those acronyms and all those names is basically, it's an analyst in a box, right? It's an automated analyst in a box. So how this architecture works at a high level is how this architecture works and this is how what actually goes on. So this is the outlier system, our, um, system architecture. So the outlier system architecture consists of three primary software components. And they're highlighted here on the screen. You've got security analytic a portal, the collection service agent, and you also have the data vault. Okay. So let's walk through what actually happens here. So the outlier system consists of those three primaries, right? But this is what the, each one of them does. So security analytic uh, portal, the portal is delivered as a cloud-based software as a service, so a SaaS, right? And the portal and the portal provides these capabilities. Software provisioning of the data vault, which the data vault we'll talk about in a second. Web-based browser user, user interface, database of collected endpoint metadata, the hashes and the suspicious binaries threat and binary analytics, and artifact uh, management and alert creation. Now down in the data vault, which is, if you want to think of the data vault as down into your endpoint, into your endpoint enterprise, is provides an agentless way to scan Windows machines that are connected to a network domain. So even if those machines do not have SEP on them, but they're still running with inside your domain, it still provides us a way to go ahead and scan those, okay? resides within the customer's enterprise network, provisioned by the security analytic portal. Um, it initiates automated monitoring scanning of endpoints on a scheduled basis or manual upon demand. Agentless endpoints are, are accomplished using the native Windows Network Service, RPC. And then the, those are the two ports that we communicate on via the cloud or the host. The collection service agent, which we call the CSA, the CSA is an alternative to the data vault to support non-domain Windows. So this is when it's not Windows, it's a different OS, it's like Linux and Apple OS or OS X machines, sorry. Um, executes on the endpoint, it initiates a connection from the endpoint to the security analytic portal. After establishing that connection, it operates similar to how the data vault collects the hashes, the metadata and the other artifacts. We also now give you full forensic byte level view. So most competitive solutions, as we know, looks at the malware or are malware focused. Um, EDR agentless examines the entire computer, not just the malware focused. It actually examines the whole image of the, of the computer itself. And then that automated analysis requires less human so it goes through this, like we talked about the machine learning, talking about the reputation, the behavior, or the mixture of all that stuff put together. And it gives us the ability to um, automate that process. 
So how is EDR um, agentless different from the ATP endpoint? So there's a couple side by sides. One, EDR EDR and agentless does not require an agent as the ATP endpoint in the current version or previous version did. Snapshot of information. We're taking a snapshot of that information rather than continuously monitoring. When you have ATP endpoint in, installed with SEP installed, we can continuously monitor that real-time response, okay? Remember that agentless is gonna be a snapshot of that information. Um, orchestration and automation of the investigative investigation tasks. Um, we have built-in detection rules and manual investigation on the ATP, on the ATP endpoint. Um, kill process and blacklist kind of the same, pretty much close to the same thing over on the other side, is we have endpoint isolation, uh, deletion of files, and that should say blacklisting. Um, apologize for my typo. I'll fix that. Um, I don't know what I was trying to type there, but it's supposed to be blacklisting. Um, agentless, um, EDR agentless requires a third-party deton detonation. Um, ATP endpoint, of course, we use Cynic out there in the cloud, our embedded detonation out in the cloud. Um, um, agentless is also, um, EDR agentless is also full as a fully cloud service. Um, ATP endpoint is an on-prem appliance virtual or physical with cloud components such as like we just talked about Cynic where we go out to the cloud and get that information or have that detonation done. Um, we can utilize third-party engines for EPP detections. Um, is the agentless, and in, in our case with the ATP endpoint, uses SEP for all the EPP detections. Integrations and usability improvements. So integrations, on-prem sandboxing. So you now have the capability to do on-prem sandboxing instead of just sending things up to Cynic to have it do the detonation of the sandboxing and determining up there, you can actually do on-prem sandboxing now. And we also have AD role mapping. Um, that we now have tied AD uh, for role mapping into the ATP appliance, which we did not have before. Usability, we've added detection filters with less clicks. In other words, we wanted to kind of make it easier to get a detection, get that information without having to really drill down each time to get that information. Um, you can now export all your search results. And there's multiple, there's, there's been some improvements on searching. Uh, which we'll talk about in just a second, um, but you can also export the search results and then better view of the system and, and user health, right? You have a better view on what is actually going on on that and not only that endpoint, but on your environment also. And do not click for the cat memes because cat memes are bad. So I brought up a second ago about the search improvements. So we've added a little bit to the search improvements. So not only is it to that database and the endpoint like we had before where we can do our um, query, our search query against the existing database, the SEP database is connected to it, and also look out on endpoints. We also can do search ATP for logged events. So we can now look back at logged events. We can also search the database for um, entity details. And then, like before, we can search the endpoint for current and recorded artifacts. So before, it was just what current artifacts are there. We can now actually do current and recorded artifacts off of the ATP, off the endpoint um, search. It gives us a, a full database search capability to know what's going on on our endpoints or our managed endpoints, and then also um, give us a real-time query. So ITS can help with this. So there is some there is some additional information that I'll make sure that uh, that uh, Stephanie and the team at ITS Partners and myself get together for you on some sizing. Uh, there's some sizing requirements to start using um, to use the new 3.0 with the EDR capabilities and some additional features that you can get in there um, that will make sure if you need any help with sizing, you know, definitely reach out to us. Let us help you uh, get the sizing and design and mapping out um, uh, for you. SEP and ATP have great assistance, of course. If you need any help with it, with those two things, we can help out with those and a multiple other products that that um, that we that we um, provide professional services for. ATP evaluations, um, ATP evaluation slash demo slash POC. You know, we're more than happy to do those. You know, reach out to us. You know, set up a time we can we can walk through and do a deeper dive into into um, into ATP or help with any issues that you're having. Uh, we do also do a ref, uh, free red flag assessment. Uh, we do a red flag assessment, basically kind of looking and making sure that 
that you're adhering to um, the best security practices that are out there and then providing, you know, maybe some little bit of guidance on which direction you should go and provide back a written scorecard that will kind of let you know where you set based off of the industry that you're in. Another thing I want to follow up with this and, and, and on this screen and I'll do it now is we're going to do a couple other webinars that are going to be off of this. And uh, one of the webinars I'm going to do in the next month is we're going to do one based off of use cases. So in other words, um, we're going to do some use cases saying if this, if you need to see this or if you need to do this, how would you do that? And we're actually going to walk through the console and show how each one of those um, um, items or use cases can be resolved. So that's another one of them that we're going to do. So if you think of it, why the audience is out there today for this webinar, if you think about it, reach out to us. If you have a use case and it's something that we can put in there, I'd be more than happy to put it put it in there and then make sure um, that your questions get answered also uh, that way if we don't answer them already previously by email. Uh, one other thing we're going to do a more of advanced deep dive will be the third webinar that we'll do or the th third presentation that we'll do which will be more advanced going down and, and looking at the correlation and looking how we're bringing all that together and then looking at how we can um, um, go ahead and kill um, threats that are out there and how we can use EDR properly and, and use the system that's involved. So again, as I already told you, we're in Grand Rapids, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave the screen up. These are our kind of contacts. Um, of course, you can definitely write your information in there. Um, but, excuse me, but these are our contact information that you can reach out to us, you know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, email on the website. And of course, you know, I, we also have LinkedIn out there. Of course, you can reach us on that too. But big thing is reach out to us if there's anything that we can help you with, um, with ATP. Um, going forward, or if you have any questions concerning where you're currently at an ATP or SEP and how we can help with that. And then, like I said, if you have any additional questions, comments, concerns, or anything that I can help you with or that ITS can help you with going forward, please let us know. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>